Good, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for attending to our presentation. This is not intended to be an exhaustive literature review, neither a step-by-step -step list on how to communicate the volcanic hazard and risk. On the contrary, this is more a reflection and personal perspective of the authors and how we visualize communication. Francisca is an anthropologist and a master in social sciences, while I am a geologist finishing my volcanology PhD. Risk communication is visualized as a two-way exchange of information on the nature, magnitude, significance, or control of a risk. Its main purpose is to reduce and contain the harm of our exposed populations during a crisis. While during the preparation stage, it aims to inform the population, during the crisis, it provides uh, key situation messages. The message is uh, made uh, to supply awareness of uh, the hazard and risk, or to inform about uh, the changes in the behavior of the system. Warning messages are released uh, during a volcanic crisis. The maps represent a unique situation and setting. They require feedback from the audience and considering interdisciplinary work on a visual communication. Integrated hazard zones may help capture audience attention in the early stage as the event evolves, uh, while discrete foot this discrete footprints of individual hazards may help better inform high-stake decisions. There are two uh, different approaches um, to carry out risk communication. The first one is science-centered, and there is a claim of more involvement of social sciences to validate scientific knowledge with policymakers and local communities. Also, I need to build trust and develop an all risk reduction culture. The integration of social and physical sciences can provide expert advice to governments and the subsequent communication of the risk to populations. Hence, risk communication is understood as a tool for divulgation of scientific knowledge and the integration of objective volcanologic volcanological knowledge by the public. The second is people-centered risk communication, and uh, it is based on the interpretation and communication of uncertain scientific information, foster ad ad adaptations in uh, the scientific understanding of long-term evolution of a volcanic activity and the advisory response. It uh, needs an ability to anticipate and hazard and risk communication requires uh, the design and the, the dissemination of clear messages that enhance people actions before, during, and after volcanic crisis. Hence, uh, risk communication is understood as a people-centered and sustainable process, not as an itinerant action. There are some important limitations when communicating, and many of them are related to the receiver and uh, need feedback. For instance, scientists are not always trusted. People may have pre-existing conceptions and beliefs. They can interpret the message based on education and access to information. And, uh, the experiential knowledge shapes the decision making. So why are communities so complex? Cultural aspects that differ between regions, even in neighboring countries affected by the same hazard, usually multi-ethnic multi -ethnic, uh, reality involving religious, political, and philosophical arguments, and social, economic, and political forces that can distort the risk message. For instance, we can uh, uh, mention Villa Rica, which is the most active and highest threat volcano in Chile. The area was formerly inhabited by Mapuche people, the natives, 
but lately colonized by Europeans. It now marks the border of two political administrative regions. Densely populated and touristic cities are located northwest and the small towns to the south. Then, despite the size of, of the area surrounding Villarica, these factors arrange in a complex way for hazard and risk communication. It is quite clear that disaster memories and emotions depend on physical factors of the affected people. Insufficient uh, resources at the, the local level play a role for reaching the communities. Lately, a lack of willingness among public at risk to share responsibility for disaster risk management with the authorities is sometimes observed. And uh, finally, tourists are generally not risk adverse, highlighting the considerable changes of uh, communication. Uh, communication. <clears throat> As open systems, volcanic communities may be constituted by large numbers of tourists with totally different local knowledge and cultural background in some cases. Um, risk communication with these groups has failed uh, to the point where uh, tourists expose themselves to volcanic hazards. Uh, this has uh, been observed in Villarica and Chian volcanoes where individuals have been legally prosecuted by their actions uh, in Chile. So considering the degree of complexity of surfing human groups inhabiting volcanoes, we visualize and propose the following considerations. We adapt uh, uh, a method that has been used for a long time in marketing, business, and uh, user-based innovation, design think thinking. This, uh, this method has first a step that involves understanding and learning from people through uh, engaging multidisciplinary experts, especially social scientists, it is key to determine the needs and the knowledge of the people. And once uh, this step is finished, the strategy is designed and tested with the community to get their feedback, allowing modification and improvement. Finally, the strategy is applied to complement the knowledge of the people, focusing on the message um, and vulnerabilities that. Um, propitiate a political discussion with a, a horizontal interaction. When approaching the communities, we should understand that many are living there by choice, as volcanoes offer a, a series of natural resources, biodiversity, scenic beauty, and often peace. This is the reason behind peasantry lives uh, are frequent while uh, some others come by amenity. That's the case of uh, some communities of the Southern Andes as Puerto Varas or Las Cascadas as uh, shown uh, in the bottom images. As a result, we have uh, to be empathic and respect respectful. Communities uh, living with volcanoes tend to consider these as a part of their lives and beliefs. Even in the case of Pululawa Caldera, Ecuador, as seen in the image, people may live quietly and having fertile conditions for livestock and agriculture inside the, the caldera. Unlike uh, the, the visitors, as we are when visiting human settlements in volcanoes, the locals know quite a lot about their memories. Some of them have experienced past eruptions, felt earthquakes, or have developed a specific perception of, of the volcano. Some practices as seasonal migrations, natural medicine, and the use of volcanic and hydrothermal resources are deeply rooted in their culture 
and inherited through generations. Also, dialoguing mutual uh, uncertainties between the experts and communities may help clarifying the degree of understanding about the problem. This may help focusing the future research or connections needed to answer these questions. We have seen sometimes that people is far more interested in hard answering questions, such as the storage of magma or future vent opening, rather than tectonic plates or the definition of what, it is, what is a volcano. And one of the most important points uh, is to show up vulnerabilities, especially those that are transversal to volcanoes and other natural and, or anthropic hazards. For instance, the inhabitants of Stromboli recently experienced a disastrous world wildfire. But um, in the case of an eruption, vulnerabilities are the same. They are isolated, paying quite a lot of money for water access with a few rescue units and poor transportation within the island. They also have large touristic population not aware of all the risks. So this is transversal for different hazards. Moreover, volcanic eruptions may have long-term effects in livelihoods and lifestyles and sometimes poor handling when uh, the crisis ends, thus prioritizing a honest conversation is beneficial. Despite scientists are called to be neutral and objective, getting closer to communities imply a unique degree of uh, knowledge about the problem. Hence, propitiating a political dialogue and bringing important messages from the community to the stakes, stakeholders may help managing risk. So uh, we show uh, in the last uh, few uh, slides, an applied case study at Lonkimai volcano. This is a conic stratovolcano, late place to see into historic age, it has monogenetic centers along a northeast trending fissure system, and uh, historical eruptions have um, uh, occurred since uh, 1852. And this volcano uh, experienced a recent seismic activity and was moved into yellow alert um, in uh, March, sorry, in, in, yes, in March this year. So human settlements are located less than 12 kilometers from the vent. So uh, to design uh, risk communication uh, in this area is related to three conditions present in Malakawayo. First, exposure to disaster risk in a rural place. Second, it's a heterogeneous socio-cultural and socio-economic composition, and third, knowledge gaps on volcanism. And uh, we mean knowledge gaps because uh, with, with the existence of a, a local environmental, environmental knowledge in this community. So uh, they, they know a bit about the volcano. So uh, this approach is or consist of people's appropriation and understanding of the volcanic knowledge. Second, it is fundamental to assess volcanic risk communication, supporting decisions, decision-making at, at the local scale before, during, and after eruptions in all the levels, including family, community, authorities, etc. And third, it is especially relevant at rural human settlements with deep territorial identities based on the, uh, the volcanic landscape. So these are the references of our work. And thank you for your attention. We uh, wait for your questions. Thank you so much.